Hello, I'm JW and it's failed electrical products again and uh, this particular item has actually been sent in and it's still in the uh, packaging here so let's have a look inside. Now I do know what this is because uh, first of all the uh, person sending it uh, actually uh, told me and also on the outside it does actually say here and uh, just uh, zoom in there as you see it says faulty IEC lead so uh, obviously didn't need any uh, powers of deduction there it's uh, clearly marked as to what the thing is. So let's uh, just uh, open it up and have a look what we've got. Now I'll say this has obviously been sent in because it's uh, faulty or defective in some way. So uh, although of course it is a lead, inevitably it's going to have some or problems. And in this particular video we'll just have a quick look and see how bad it actually is and whether or not uh, we can do anything else with it. Now this has been sent in by a viewer and uh, they have the username Copeland AA. So uh, let's uh, just have a look and see what we've got. Now so the plug on this end is one of these sort of three uh, prong or the sort of clover leaf uh, things as they're described. So uh, that looks uh, reasonably correct there. The uh, flex we have, uh, it is actually marked there. It's uh, allegedly uh, 3 by uh, 0.75 square millimetres and uh, got the various uh, markings along there which uh, sounds a bit difficult to see there but uh, we can certainly uh, have a closer look there. So say 3 core uh, 0.75 uh, square millimetres and it's got various other markings and numbers on there whether that's uh, true or not of course uh, is another matter which we'll uh, see at the end and uh, so it's a fairly standard thing these are typically used for uh, sort of laptop uh, power supplies and other computer related things so nothing uh, terribly unusual there. Now on this end we've got a uh, plug which uh, allegedly is the uh, BS1363 variety and uh, unfortunately it's got the sleeved earth pin there so pretty obviously uh, a bit of a disaster already and uh, the uh, plug itself uh, Dimensionally is uh, probably reasonably correct. It does actually claim on the thing to have the uh, BS1363 standard, or at least made to that, but obviously uh, not because of that. And uh, there is a fuse inside, and uh, let's just have a look in there and take that out. So let's see what we've got in here. Okay, so the two contacts in the bottom, whether they're connected to anywhere is uh, another story, but we'll uh, have a look at that in a moment. And uh, fairly standard sort of plastic holder piece here. Now let me just get the uh, fuse out of here which uh, does seem to be extremely difficult. So uh, this is not a good start as the uh, ends of the fuse appear to be larger than the plastic holder that it's been put into. So it really does raise the question as to why that is. Now here's the fuse and it's just got the big word fuse on it. It says 3 amps but I'm presuming the 1 has worn off because it's the brown colour. Although maybe not. Um, anyway and uh, BS1362 which is the standard that it should be made to. And um, it does look rather dubious so I think we'll have a closer look at that. Now here's the fuse uh, in a much more uh, close-up view and uh, as you can see it just has that big word fuse rather badly printed on there and uh, the end caps uh, look rather scratched and dented and uh, not particularly good so uh, just rotate that there it says 3 amps but uh, as it's brown it should be a 13 amp fuse so uh, the actual rating is certainly not clear is it just the case that the uh, one has been rubbed off or was never printed on or is it a 3 amp fuse that's been printed brown by mistake and uh, claims to be uh, BS1362 which uh, should be the uh, standard for a fuse of this type although uh, say the uh, general appearance of it is uh, very very strange it's certainly not uh, anywhere near a uh, proper fuse of that size. Now this is the uh, fuse from the device here at the top this brown thing and uh, the fuse underneath is a uh, genuine 3 amp fuse uh, the rating is unimportant because they're all the uh, same physical size and uh, as you can see the uh, genuine fuse is significantly longer than the uh, effort that we've got on the top there so uh, pretty obviously this uh, 
fuse here at the top of the brown writing has not been made to the correct standards because you see the uh, length of it is totally incorrect. Now in terms of the end caps they are uh, reasonably within the right sort of size area but certainly the uh, length of the thing is uh, completely wrong. Let's have a look at the ends there so the uh, genuine fuse has the uh, sort of dimple in the middle which is probably where the why it's attached. So uh, it's certainly the wrong dimension, which is a fairly fundamental fail if you're making a uh, part fit into a fuse holder. It's obviously, the holders are designed to accept a fuse of a specific size. So here's the uh, fuse. I've just broken it to uh, see what's inside. It does appear to be made of a type of ceramic material. See the uh, fuse wire in there. But uh, so there's no uh, sand filling or anything else in there. It's purely just a uh, ceramic tube with the wire attached between the uh, two end caps. And if you look down in the bottom there, you can see that the uh, wire appears to have just been placed between the ceramic tube and the end cap, presumably, and the cap was just shoved on the end and uh, holds that in place. We can't really see down the outer side of that, but. Uh, it's certainly not uh, attached to the uh, center of that. And again on that end, uh, so the wire just goes down inside there. And it seems to be the same deal with it being uh, just sort of caught between the uh, tubing and the metal end cap. Now here's the uh, Busman fuse, and uh, as you can see, uh, opening it up, a uh, considerable amount of sand will uh, spill out of there. And again, that's there to absorb the energy from an explosion of the uh, fuse wire. Now, obviously, the fuse wire on this is smaller because, uh, of course, this is a uh, three amp fuse. But uh, if you look in the end of there, see the detail of how the wire is attached. It's actually attached to the centre of the cap there. I notice that the tube of ceramic goes all the way to the top with the wire fixed in the centre rather than the wire sort of going around the outside, which uh, as we saw in the other one, again in that one there again, you can see uh, the wire is down the centre of the tubing and again fixed in the centre of that uh, end cap, which is obviously machined with that sort of whole piece in the centre. And again, that's important to keep the wire in the centre of the tube so that the sand filling uh, therefore covers the entire thing on all sides. Obviously if the uh, wire was just at one side it could uh, therefore break through the outer covering. So uh, that's the genuine fuse. And again they say this is a 3 amp uh, wire so obviously it's going to be a bit thinner inside. And see so the wall is fairly thick and in, on the other one even the wall is of a similar thickness there. So uh, let's get to uh, compare there, so the uh, genuine fuse here on the red one and the uh, other one there. So uh, wall thickness on that 31 is somewhat thicker, but say so there's no sand filling and the wire seems to be just sort of uh, stuck between the ceramic tube and the cap, so certainly not uh, the uh, same standard of construction. Now just do some basic uh, continuity checks on this to make sure that it's actually wired in the uh, correct fashion. So just got the uh, meter there with the uh, continuity setting. So uh, we'll just check from the uh, various pins. So the uh, earth pin of course should be uh, connected here and obviously not to the others. That's fine. And again for the uh, neutral pin there which should be connected to one of them and obviously not the others. Now the live pin of course should be connected via the fuse so uh, we shouldn't get any kind of connection here. Which is good, we don't, and it should connect in here to the uh, fuse holder on one side and not the other. So, okay, that's fine. And then we should find that one side of, or the other side of the fuse, of course, should be what's connected through to the pin at the other end. So, if we just clip in there, and again, this should be connected to the uh, terminal there, which it is. So, uh, that's reasonable. So at least it does appear to be uh, wired up correctly. Now just uh, check the uh, resistance of the wires and obviously the uh, plug, there's a complete assembly as well. And uh, for this we've uh, got the uh, ohm meter here with the uh, sort of Kelvin type uh, 
clips on the end. That's been shown in a previous video. So if we just uh, switch on. Okay, there we go. Now, obviously 4K is going to be far too high, so we would expect it to be the uh, milliohm sort of end. So we'll try that to start with. And of course here we can just simply clip onto the uh, pin there. The, uh, try the earth first. And then this is actually thin enough, so it will just push inside the uh, actual plug end. So uh, anyway, so we'll go for the earth one first and uh, put a moderate amount of pressure there. Okay, so we're looking at sort of uh, 108, 107 sort of area there. So that doesn't seem too bad. What sort of 107.2? Now, of course, all of these should in fact be the same because also the uh, individual wires inside should also be the same size. So again, we'll try the neutral pin in, uh, this time. Okay, well, that seems to be a bit higher there, about sort of 121. Uh, 122 sort of area. Okay. Now the live one, obviously, we're going to have to connect down in here because, of course, this pin is uh, via the fuse. So obviously, no point uh, just connecting there; it won't do anything. So if we just connect in down there, and we can just go into the terminal here. Okay, so again, we're looking at the sort of 120 uh, sort of mark. So uh, the uh, line in neutral seem to be reasonably consistent, and the uh, earth is actually a bit lower, which uh, is rather strange because they would expect them to all be the same, given that the uh, obviously they're all the same length and they certainly should be of the same dimension. Now, those readings of, say, 110 milliohms for the length of wire we have here do seem on the high side. And obviously the uh, resistance depends on the cross-sectional area and what it's made of. Certainly if it's made of copper, I've got a data sheet here which uh, states the resistance uh, as 26 ohms per kilometre, or obviously that's uh, 26 milliohms per metre. Now this particular wire is uh, 1.5 metres long, so of course that would uh, equate to 39 milliohms. And even allowing a bit extra for the uh, pins and the uh, connectors perhaps, that's still far less than the 110 or so we were getting uh, when measuring it on that uh, earlier test. So uh, either it's not 0.75, it's something smaller, or it's not made of copper, it's uh, copper-clad steel or some other uh, unwanted material. But either way, uh, those resistances are at least double what you would expect, and in reality they're actually more than that because uh, the uh, pins at the end are not going to add very much at all due to the... Uh, substantial physical size of them compared to the very thin flex. Now just the uh, final test to do on this uh, today will be uh, using the uh, magnet here to identify if there's any steel or other ferrous uh, components inside. So uh, let's just go in here. Well, it seems that the pins are uh, not made of steel at least, so that's something. Not totally clear uh, what they are made of, but uh, yes, there doesn't appear to be any uh, steel in there. And the uh, flex itself, again, doesn't appear to be... No, there's no uh, attraction there that can determine. So it seems fine. And, uh, oh, well, at this end we've got something uh, that's not quite right, because, uh, as you can see there, it's uh, readily attracted to the uh, plug part at this end. So. Obviously something steel inside there, which uh, is a bit disturbing because you wouldn't expect uh, steel to be uh, found inside the end of a plug. Generally you would expect the contacts to be uh, brass or uh, phosphor bronze or something. But uh, pretty obviously, uh, no, there's uh, some kind of steel in there. So we're looking at that sort of weird plated material again. So there's a look at that uh, rather dubious uh, mains lead there. And uh, certainly it has a number of problems, that pin being uh, insulated there for one. The fuse, of course, was uh, highly doubtful. And even if it was a proper 13 amp fuse, that's still incorrect because uh, 0.75 uh, square millimeter flex, of course, is not rated for 13 amps in the first place. It's only uh, rated for something like uh, 5 or maybe even less. And uh, fairly obviously the uh, end here contains some kind of ferrous material, so we're probably looking at steel contacts in there. 
rather than, of course, the uh, proper brass or whatever, and obviously steel uh, being uh, somewhat less conductive than copper, then, of course, that's going to lead to overheating. And in the next video, we'll put some uh, more substantial currents through this thing and see uh, what happens. But obviously, we'll do that outside, so I'm uh, not doing that today because uh, it's pouring with rain, so unfortunately, uh, not possible to do that. But uh, until next time, thanks for watching.